People in parts of Europe are beginning to push back against newly imposed COVID-19 restrictions there. The Italian government has approved a $7 billion relief package to help sectors hardest hit by the pandemic. But there's anger about a new round of tight restrictions on what Italians are allowed to do. Protesters, some of them shouting freedom, smashed and looted shops and clashed with police. And in Spain, one of Europe's worst hotspots, strict new rules have been reimposed under a second state of emergency. Redmond Shannon on the reaction to Europe's powerful second wave. Broken glass in Turin as Italy breaks another record for daily cases of COVID-19. This, the result of anti-lockdown protests on Monday. Police say they fired tear gas after dodging Molotov cocktails. There were similar scenes in Milan and marches against restrictions across the country. Bars and restaurants can now only serve takeout after 6 p.m. and many regions have nighttime curfews. This woman says allowing lunch service but not dinner makes no sense. Disquiet of a different sort in Madrid, bus drivers appealing for financial help and medical staff demanding better conditions to deal with the virus. Spain also has a nationwide curfew and new restrictions to deal with the sharp second wave. If COVID spreads because people are going out, yes, it will slow it down. But I don't believe that any government actually has a solution. 150 Spanish politicians and business leaders are facing criticism after attending this gala on Monday night. We are all outraged, especially because uh, this uh, party and these photographs come basically one day after that we have been asked by our government to stay home. The Minister of Health was among those in the crowd. Una auto -reflexión. A government spokesperson said all protocols were adhered to, but some self-reflection is needed. It is uh, for the entire population, it is like a slap in the face. Spain's Prime Minister Pedro Sánchez wants the current state of emergency to last up to six months. Redmond Shannon, Global News, London.